What is up, crypto heads, and welcome back to Crypt Technicals. Today, we're going to be diving into a project called Kita Network, all right? A high speed blockchain that is making waves in the crypto space. So, is this the future of finance? Is Kita really as scalable and compliant as they claim? Well, we are going to be going beyond the hype and breaking everything down for you guys. You know how we do here. Talking about its tech, business model, market impact, competitors, tokenomics, all that good stuff, guys. So if that sounds good, you know what to do. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and let's get into it. Kita isn't your average blockchain. It runs on a hybrid DAG plus DPoS architecture meaning that it processes transactions in parallel instead of a single chain. And that's how it achieves a mind-blowing 10 million transactions per second, you guys, and sub-second finality. So there's no mempool delays, no bottlenecks, just instant transactions, you guys. And get this, Kita is cloud-native, meaning it scales dynamically with computing power. Plus, it has a built-in identity verification for KYC and AML compliance, dude. Fan flip fantastic. So, how does Kita actually generate revenue? Well, it's targeting cross-border payments, right? So, aiming to replace slow, expensive bank transfers with near-instant settlements at up to 70% lower fees. Kita is also integrating on-chain credit scoring through Solo, allowing users to prove financial trustworthiness on blockchain. All right, that's huge. It means lending, investing, and identity verification could all happen in seconds, you guys, beyond payments, Kita could become a financial backbone, offering tokenized real-world assets, staking incentives, and governance mechanisms, all right? So, Kita launched in 2025 and skyrocketed over 600% within weeks. Why? Because heavyweights like Eric Schmidt, the ex-Google CEO, are backing it. Plus, Solo's partnership brings credit scoring and banking integration, uh, so, so something that crypto desperately needs, right? So right now, institutions and fintechs are eyeing Kita as the next-gen blockchain for global finance. If this takes off, we could see banks, remittance companies, and even stock exchanges integrating tokenized assets on Kita's ledger. So how does it compare to its competitors? Okay, so let's put Kita side-by-side -side with some crypto giants. So compared to XRP, Kita offers higher throughput and a built-in KYC compliance, right? But XRP has legacy banking ties. Against Solana, Kita's speed is exponentially higher, but Solana has a thriving DeFi ecosystem. And Ethereum, Kita outpaces Ethereum by over 600,000 transactions per second. But Ethereum still dominates smart contracts. So bottom line, if Kita delivers on its promises, it could carve out a serious niche, especially in institutional finance and real-world asset tokenization. Speaking of tokens, let's talk the KTA, okay? Kita's native token, KTA, 1 billion total supply. 50% is dedicated to ecosystem growth, meaning uh, rewards, grants, uh, liquidity incentives, things like that. Uh, founders and investors are locked in for years, right? So there's no crazy dumps here anytime soon, okay? KTA is used for transaction fees, staking, governance, and possibly cross-chain utility in the future. Inflation is built in. But the goal is long-term sustainability while keeping fees ultra low. So, Kita is one of the most ambitious Layer 1 networks that we have seen in a long time, you guys. And if it executes on its speed and compliance vision, it could dominate cross-border payments and tokenized assets. But there are some risks, right? Competition is fierce, regulation is tricky, and Kita still has to prove 10 million transactions per second scalability in the real world. But wait, it already has. No, you are not seeing things. 11,212,454 transactions per second, you guys. All right. So the stress test for Kita was done on uh, June 12th, 2025, aiming to validate its 10 million transaction per second claim in 400 millisecond settlement time. The test was live streamed for transparency, and Kita collaborated with the Google Spanner engineering team to conduct the evaluation. However, there's been some controversy surrounding the legitimacy of the test, with some analysts questioning 
whether the results were fabricated because of course we've always got always got to fud stuff <laughs> right uh anyways michael ruzik uh, founder of defi capital markets alleged that the testnet was completely fake claiming that the explorer was merely testing fake transaction data rather than executing real swaps sounds to me like his butt is hurt um on-chain investigator zach xbt also raised concerns stating that Kita's token supply was controlled by sketchy KOLs rather than actual builders. Like these are just crybabies. Uh, Kita's founder, uh, T.Y. Sh- Sh- Schneck, I think is how you say it, uh, responded to these accusations, calling them completely false and unfair. I agree. And invited critics to discuss the matter directly with the team. Uh, Kita is expected to address these concerns in an upcoming X Space uh, discussion to clarify the results. And methodology used in the test net. So, yeah, super bullish on this project, you guys. Super bullish on this project. Definitely check them out. Um, check out their X page. It's uh, at Kita Network. Um, do a little bit of digging into them. Um, the uh, uh, check out the web page. The official links. Uh, uh, you know, screenshot that I had pulled up. I'm gonna throw up again here before the end of this video. Uh, a little bit longer for you to take a look at. Um, but, uh, yeah, definitely check this project out, guys. Do your own research. Um, super bullish on this project. So I appreciate each and every one of you guys for hanging in there with me, checking it out. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you guys in the next one. All right. Later.